The title of my short piece is An Apology to the Lichen on Comb Ridge. <laughs> I'm sorry I tasted you. <laughs> Who am I to lick an organism that thrives on aridity? Your pores opened for the false promise of rain that never came. My saliva is no monsoon. <laughs> the title of my long piece is When Our Gods Take Us Back. Their gods took them back. The ancestral Puebloans of northern Arizona no longer fire pottery in earthen kilns amid the scent of junipers. After drought, invasion, and collapse, little remains of their civilization but ceramic shards and abandoned dwellings. I bend to examine one shard, black lines crossing white as if they'd been painted yesterday. We don't touch those, Adrian, my host on the Navajo Nation, warns me quickly. The people who made them are no longer alive. Their gods took them back. Never had I considered a cosmology in which gods could retract their creations at will, but Adrian lives in a world in which he too could be taken back by the gods. In his own terms, Adrian was describing extinction, the vanishing of a culture or species. Extinction is to evolution as death is to life, a normal and necessary balance. But once in a while, balance is lost and dying triumphs over living. To the west of Adrian's home, I peer into Marble Canyon, dizzied by the vast vertical space between me and the worm-thin Colorado below. Life and death are stenciled into these rosy canyon walls. On either side of the river, limestone cliffs cradle marine fossils of nautilus and brachiopod. Above, slopes of hermit shale encase tree ferns. A dozen feet higher, Coconino sandstone archives the tracks of spiders that cross dunes in fog. I stare into the graveyard abyss, a mile of compressed skeletons, and contemplate deep time. Once, before erosion, a 250 million year old layer of rock sat where I now stand. It held no fossils. This blank slab told the story of the Permian extinction. When volcanic eruptions smothered the earth in carbon dioxide, acidifying oceans, and extinguishing 90% of all species. The Permian was one of five mass extinctions the Earth has experienced. Against the odds, my ancestors, and those of every living organism, clung to life through them all. According to Navajo origin stories, Adrian's ancestors also climbed to the present through many worlds. The first world was pure darkness. The second was destroyed by fire the third by water, the fourth, the glittering world we inhabit today. It glitters with diverse life, revealed in flashes to the persistent observer. Over the past two months of travel through the West, I have witnessed a satyr comma butterfly uncurling its tongue, red-spotted toads hopping on Rio Grande mud, a tiger salamander shoveling dirt at dawn, bison, grazing in the rain, mountain bluebirds behaving queerly before a storm on the Missouri, harlequin grasshoppers in New Mexico, a Texas horned lizard cupped in my hand. Every day, the world grows a little less bright because these organisms, these breathing jewels that define my world, are dying. One by one, as human development obliterates the habitat for which they evolved, species are taken back by their gods. Current extinction rates are 1,000 times greater than background levels, and that figure may rise to 10,000 within the century. The Earth has entered its sixth mass extinction, the Anthropocene. The glittering world is beginning to dull. Yet, as the Navajo know, when one world is destroyed, another fills the void. Above the fossil-free deposits of the Permian extinction, the Moenkopi rock formation provides a layer of mineral hope. Its dark red mud displays some of the earliest amphibian skeletons. Its overhanging sandstone ledges record the lumbering gait of Chirotherium, a reptile whose tracks are likened to chubby human handprints. Out of death, terrestrial life was born. The epilogue to each mass extinction is an explosion of diversity. I find peace dreaming of an Anthropocene explosion, the weird and wonderful lives that will paint the blank canvas of the Navajo's fifth world. I wonder if my descendants will be among them. 
I wonder if my species can survive the climb from a world destroyed not by fire or water, but by ourselves. I am not the first to wonder such things. Red handprints sear high across Monarch Canyon in southern Utah, painted a thousand years ago by ancestral Puebloans. A lone print stands out above the faint outline of a building. Perhaps a 22-year-old Puebloan scaled the stone granary and pressed her hand, dripping with magenta cochinilla firmly against the canyon wall. I see my own bones reflected in the curve of her pinky finger, the thick base of her thumb. Fearing that her generation of Puebloans might be the last, aware that her gods were plotting to take back her people, she asked the earth, what comes next? I stretch on tiptoes and place my hand below hers. A shiver races up my arm because I am asking the same question of my dying world. Because the sandstone is cool against my sweaty palm. Because, for an instant, I cannot tell which hand is hers and which is mine. <laughs> <laughs>